G'day. Mathematicians are really not great fans of trial and error or guess and check as a primary method of solving problems. We like to think of strategies or gain insight. Now those methods are good if you have no idea what you're doing and want to explore a problem sufficiently that perhaps some pattern starts to reveal itself to you. But often a little bit of thought before we start can save a lot of effort. And uh, this particular puzzle I'm going to show you is something of a classic and most people really approach it randomly. Uh, no particular method in mind. I want to suggest to you that there is a good method, but let me show you the puzzle first. It's quite a simple one. You're given an array. Here we go. And this is a no frills sort of site. So when I draw these or show these, you can get a bit of scrap paper and do it yourself. You don't need a computer or a spreadsheet or anything fancy for it. Just pencil and paper, pen. Notice that it has eight squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're not counting the big composite squares, just eight little squares. And you're given the numbers one to eight. And you have to place one of them in each square. Well, so far that's very easy to do. In fact, there are, you might ask yourself how many different ways is it possible. Uh, that gets into combinatorics and probability. Uh, another journey, another talk. But there's a restriction and the restriction is this, that if you place a number here for example, then you are not permitted to put an adjacent number in one of these three squares that touches it. So it can touch on a boundary or that it can even touch on a corner diagonally. And what I mean by uh, adjacent number is that if I, for example, put the number 3 here, I wouldn't be allowed to put a 2 or a 4 in those positions because they're adjacent numbers or consecutive numbers. I suggest that you pause for a little while and try it yourself and see if you can work out a strategy or see if you can in fact solve it quickly and uh, I'll be right back. Now, I hope you've had a, an attempt at least. In fact, I rather hope you've solved it. But here's the logic. I'm going to draw a little version of it here to analyse. I'm not, I'm not going to actually put numbers in, so it doesn't need to be huge. But here's the question. If I put a number in this square, then what, number, what squares are excluded to me? Well, the answer is that all of these, those four, share a boundary with this one, and these two are touching diagonally, which means that whatever number I put here has only one position available for an adjacent number or a consecutive number. The same would apply to this position. None of these ones would be available, and that one is the only one adjacent number. Now if I look at my list here, there are only two numbers in that list that don't have two adjacent numbers and they're the ones at the end. Because we're not counting 0 and we're not counting 9, we're just looking at this set. Any number in the middle will have two adjacent numbers and therefore if you start with a 5 here or a 4 here or a 6 or something, it will be unsolvable. But if I put the 8 and the 1 in the middle, doesn't matter which order, I'll put the 1 here and the 8 here. Which number is adjacent to 8? It's 7. The 7 must go here because it can't be any, any of these squares that touch the 8. The 2 must go here because it can't be in any of these squares that touch the 1. And now it only remains for us to find where to put the middle numbers. Now obviously if the 2 is here, the 3 can't go here. The 4 can't go there, so it must be over here somewhere. 
And wherever the 4 goes, the 5 must go up here. The 6 must come down, and the 6 obviously can't go next to the 7. So there it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The 8 numbers are in those 8 squares. None of them are touching an adjacent number. But we've gained the insight simply because we analysed the most complicated part of the puzzle. I hope you've enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to find out about future videos. And of course, as I always ask you, if you've enjoyed the video, then please like and leave a comment. And I thank you for watching.